I was asked to say a few words. I have a choice whether to speak in Italian, que es la mi lengua nativa, o poder hablar en español también. Y hay muchos que hablan español, más, muy, más que italiano. Exactamente. Yeah. Sí, preferisco italiano. Una, una persona solo lo capisce. Sí. So just to be safe, I'll speak in English. We say on Hanukkah, Moist Sur. In the prayer that we sing of Moist Sur, we refer to Hanukkah, the miracle of Hanukkah, and we say, Portsu Choimus Migdolai Vetimu Kolashmani. They breached the walls of my sanctuary and they made the oil impure. That's how we describe the tragedy of what happened on Hanukkah. It seems a little bit strange. It's really like saying, you want to know who Hitler was? Do you want to know what Hitler did? He destroyed the synagogue in Warsaw. Yeah, he may have done that, but that doesn't define who Hitler was. How do we define the Yevonim as having breached the wall? Having breached the walls is the least of the problem. Even making the oil impure, there is an easy remedy. Why is that the definition of what Hanukkah is about? The Yevonim had one goal, to secularize Judaism. They had no problem with studying the Talmud. I remember when I was in McGill University, the professor said, he was talking about Pythagoras theory, how do you calculate the circumference of a circle? And for some reason, I'm not sure how, but he looked at me, I don't know if it was my beard or my yarmulke, I was married then, he somehow realized that I was religious. And he said, the Talmud said that pi is a third. Of course, we know better. It's not three, it's 3.14. That's what he said, we know better. So I had the chutzpah to get up and I said, if you know better, you wouldn't have said that. Because if you look at the commentaries on the Talmud, it says clearly that it's not exactly a third, but the, the Talmud is just rounding it off. The Yevonim said, I have no problem if you study the Talmud. Let it be another course in college. They have no problem. The they lived in sport. They believed in, in intellectual. Anything you do which I can reason, which I can understand, that makes sense, that they were okay with. What the Yevonim did, the Medrash brings down that there was a person who was walking and he was being taken by soldiers to be killed. So now the Jews said, what did you do? What crime did you commit that you are being taken to be killed? And she said, because I, because I circumcised my son. Another person, he was being taken to be burnt. And he says, because I learned Torah. There is somebody else who was being hanged because he ate matzah. Or he was going to be beaten because he used the lulav. That's what the Yevonim did. A thousand Jews went into a cave to be able to keep Shabbos unhindered and they were burnt alive. That's what the Yevonim did. That's a tragedy we should be talking about. Not the fact that they breached the wall. The Toises Yom Tov, he brings down that in the base of Migdosh, there used to be a wall. A wall that turned for him high, which was made out of wood. And the wall was used to show that when a, a non-Jew brought a sacrifice in the temple, he was only allowed to go a certain distance. And the wall was there to show this is how far a non-Jew is allowed to go in the temple. That was the wall that the Yevonim broke, breached. That symbolized 
to the Yevonim. What was the message behind making the oil impure? If you take two jugs of oil, and they're both identical, you can check them on a microscope, the two jugs will be perfectly equal, identical. The difference is one is pure, one is impure. There is no difference between the two at all. That is what the Yevonim had a problem with. The Yevonim had the problem with that wall, that distinction that you make between a Jew being more elevated. We are all the same. You can do anything you want as long as it makes sense. What was Rosh Chodesh? What did they have a problem with Rosh Chodesh? Rosh Chodesh, the beginning of the month, we as Jews take, calculate our calendar based on the moon as opposed to the sun. Now, because we follow the moon, there is an 11-day discrepancy, which has to be adjusted, and that's when we have a leap year. When, why would it be much easier just to follow the sun? And what do the Yuvonim care whether we kept the moon or the sun? The moon, every 50, after 15 days, it's, at its, it's a complete circle. And then from the 15th till the end of the month, it slowly, gradually gets smaller. From Avram Avinu until Shloimeh HaMelech, there were 15 generations. And those represented from Avram Avinu, Shloimeh was the height, the greatest moment in Jewish history, when the Jews had freedom, when the Jews had everything. From Shloimeh HaMelech, the Luchavom, until the destruction of the temple is another 15 days. The Jews went up, and then they came down, like all the nations, the Greeks, all the Romans, the Roman Empire, which today there's only me and Massimo left. <laughs> what is left of these great empires? Nothing. All the great empires grew, they reached the height, and then they fell. But the Jewish nation is like the moon. We go up, we reach a height, we go down, but then we start again, and we rebuild. My father went through the Holocaust, and when he survived, he was a broken man with very little hope of survival. He had no hope of living. The doctors gave him three years to live. My mother davened every Friday night that he should live another week, and he lived for 20, he lived for another 30 years. He was married for 21 years, and he was able to bring fortune. We calculated that today he would have 110 children and grandchildren, and they're all Benetoiro, and that was one man Imagine six million. He was a broken person, he was a sick person, but he rebuilt Klalisrol. Klalisrol was weak, Klalisrol was hurt. But even when we go down, we never fall. We always get up and grow again. That is what the Yavonim wanted to destroy. The Yavonim wanted to destroy that a Jew is different. Once you become a Jew, you're a different person. You have an obligation. A bris mila means you're pact. You have a pact. You have a, a, a covenant. You are connected with God and you are God's son. You can't do whatever everybody else does. You can't live like everybody else. There is a Toysus Yom Tov, which says, unlike other religions, that, is, that a non-Jew who is a good person and he lives a good life, he'll also go to paradise. Don't go to, go to hell if he's a good person and he's a gentile and he was honest and he did his things at the Toysus Yom Tov. Of course he'll go to paradise. But a Jew has higher obligation. Once a person takes a commitment to become a Jew, you have a responsibility. You are a messenger of God. You are to, supposed to give out God's message. And you have a responsibility. And the bris miller shows that you are different. You have a physical, something physically to show you that difference. And Shabbos. I always say, a non-Jewish cook can never make a cholent. You can give him the recipe, you can give him the ingredients, it will never taste the same. There is something special about Charlotte. There is something special about the whole atmosphere of the Shabbos. There is something unusual, something very holy about a Shabbos, a certain peace, a certain harmony. Those are the things that the Yevonim could not tolerate. There is a story of the Rambam that he used to be an advisor to the king in Egypt and he had somebody else in the king's palace who was very jealous of his behavior and he wanted to try to bring down the Rambam and he finally convinced the king to have a dispute, to have a challenge between them. So the Rambam agreed. So the Rambam said, I'll tell you what we'll do. I'm going to pretend, 
I'll dress like I am an Arab imam, whatever, and I will speak to your crowd. And then you'll dress like a rabbi and you'll speak to my crowd. And let's see what happens. So he said, go ahead. The Rambam gets up and he starts speaking. And in his speech, he, he brings in the Torah, different ideals, a Jewish hashkafa, and everyone is quiet and they listen. When it's a rabbi's turn, when the, the imam, the Arab, he gets up, he dresses like a rabbi, and he starts talking, and he quotes from the Quran, and from the minute he starts quoting his sources, the people, the Jews, start questioning him, start complaining. They start, wait a minute. And he turns to the king and he said, you see the difference? The Jewish people follow pursuit emes. They don't just follow a leader, whatever he says. They are a vodim of Hashem. And that's why you'll never destroy Klal Yisrael. You see Esau, Yaakov Avinu, he, sent, he said seven times, three times, four times, the Apostle repeats, he says over and over again, Imem tzochein beinecho, if I have found favor in your eyes, when he talks about Esau, he keeps saying, if I have found favor in your eyes. Eventually, when they have peace, and they're going to gather, Esau says, let me accompany you, let me go with you. And, he, and Yaakov says, to Esau, why have I found grace in your eyes? Go ahead. Glastin says, what do you mean, why have I found favor in your eyes? You kept sending presents. You kept calling yourself your slave. You called Ace of your master. You went out of your way to say, Ace of you are my master. I am your slave. You did everything you could to find favor in Ace of eyes. And now that you're friendly, he says, why have I found favor in your eyes? I don't understand. What changed? Yaakov was saying, I'll do anything to make peace with Esau, not to have to have a war and not to, not to fight and that the people shouldn't die. You are my slave, I'll give you covered, I'll bow down to you, I'll give you presents, I'll do anything you want. But the moment you want to walk with me, the moment you want to get involved in the education of my children, the minute you want to get involved in my lifestyle, then I don't want to find favor in your eyes. I don't want to be near you. We have a wall which is built around us that you don't see. A wall that makes us different, which is not tangible. That's the wall the Yevonim wanted to destroy. And therefore the miracle of the wall and the miracle of the oil was the same thing. When the Jews showed that we appreciate what Kedusha, what holiness is, when the Jews show that I am willing to sacrifice, I am not embarrassed to look like a Jew. My father used to wear a suit and a hat like I do. And I remember I was walking to shul on Shabbos with my father in Florence. And Italians, from my experience, non -Jew, Italians, non-Jewish Italian, obviously, I don't think they have any anti-Semitism in their bones. I mean, I never felt any at all. It was, it was very friendly. I grew up in, I went to a non-Jewish school. It was very nice. This Italian Jew, very nicely, dressed in jeans, with toned jeans and a t-shirt, looks at my father and he says, aren't you ashamed to walk around like this? My father looked at him and I said, and he said, look at you and look at me and you tell me who should be ashamed. Wow. He never thought about it very nicely and he walked away. Why is there a difference? Why is it we used to walk on the street and they used to look at us? Our obligation is like my father taught me as a kid. I used to be embarrassed to go to shul with my yarmulke and I used to ask my father, can I wear a casquette, a cap? And he said, never be embarrassed to be a Jew. If you are afraid to walk on the street with the yarmulke on, if you are afraid to put on tzitzis, if you are afraid to cover your hair, if you are afraid to publicly show your Judaism, then it's as if you lit your menorah above 20 amas. And if you light your menorah more than too high up, it's possible. Because if your Judaism is something you're embarrassed about, then you've got a question because that's not what we are. We have to know that in everything we do, whether it's in eating, in our learning, in our dressing, in our behavior, we are different. And that's how we reflect just like a light. It's a light that shines. And that light, we are the flames of the Archano Kamenoiro, and the light has to shine from us 
unto the nations so that they learn and they grow and they are inspired. We have to set an example.